Uh, thanks for the intro, Chrissy, and uh, thanks very much to Jackson and the team at, here for the opportunity to give you an update on the Hamlin Gold story. Hamlin's next month celebrates its second birthday, and uh, I'm done already? Man, that's quick. Um, and since we've been listing, listed, we've been focusing on our flagship project, which is the West Tanami, located up in the far northeast of Western Australia. It's a belt scale project, 2,500 square kilometres, uh, within a very much a tier one gold province. We've also more recently found uh, some nickel, copper, PG intrusive related mineralisation, but today I'll focus on the gold story. So what I'd like to do today is tell you a little bit about the company, how we're going about our exploration and some of the results we've been putting to market. So I'll introduce you to the, the company, myself, a geologist by trade, joined by Justin Osborne on the board, uh, and along with Clayton Davies, our exploration manager, we've had a few years exploring for orogenic gold in Western Australia. We've uh, not quite 100, but not far off it. Um, on the board with us, William Robinson is the managing director of uh, successful Greenfields Explorer Encounter Resources and comes from a commercial background. And uh, Philip Crutchfield at King's Council, based in Melbourne, previous chairman of Zipco. So a pretty well-rounded uh, and experienced board. And when you want to look at what the Hamlin Gold future looks like or what our strategy looks like, you really don't have to go too far from what Justin and the team at Gold Road achieved through exploration discovery. They're a junior explorer, took a large land position in a well-endowed uh, gold field or gold province, um, made a multi-million ounce gold discovery and took that junior explorer to a $2 billion company that it is today. And we think, we think that that's the sort of growth we might see in our exploration and our market cap through exploration success. So very much leverage to success. Today, we're a small company, you know, $13 million market cap with six in the bank. Um, we're really very much leveraged to exploration success. A junior explorer is a little bit different to some. We've got two major shareholders on our register, Silver Lake Resources and Goldfields, and we certainly uh, appreciate their support uh, for our work up in the, in the Tanami. So here we are, right on the Northern Territory WA border. Um, People think it's remote, it sure is. It's the place, it's one of the last great frontiers of gold exploration, I think, in Australia. It's a 100 kilometre long contiguous uh, land holding, and we're located pretty well 100 k's uh, west-northwest of the giant Newmont operations, uh, Tanami operations. Now we're on the same structures, same geology, we're not having to reinvent the, the model here, but Cali is, and the Dead Bull looks like system is truly world class. It's a top five gold producer in Australia, producing over half a million ounces per annum. It's the number one gold producing company in the world, Newmont. It's their lowest cost per ounce gold production, so it's arguably their best operation. And it's got a 2040 mine life, so it's, it's got lots of legs remaining, and they're adding ounces for fun there. There's a, it's the sort of deposit that you definitely want to find. And it's odd in the Tanami that it's, there's a giant there, but there's not another long sort of string of five to 10 million or two to five million ounce discoveries. There's a big gap there, which you don't see in any other orogenic belt in the world. There should be a distribution of multiple million ounce discoveries along that area. There's a couple of good de deposits, but really not that five or two million ounce type system. And we certainly think that's what the potential is up here in the Tanami. And why do we think it's still there? If you've never done the drive down the Tanami road, which, you know, it's, uh, it's for the brave, this is a tough part of the world to explore. It's dominantly sand covered. Most of the time we're talking about two to five metres, so it's not a lot of sand, but it's enough to get that prospecting and that traditional geochemistry almost ineffective in this part of the world. So most of the work done by previous explorers has been where there's been isolated outcrops come to surface, and a lot of work has been done in those areas. But as soon as you go under sand, we haven't been able, they haven't been able to follow those systems and target in those areas. So we're very much focused on how to, how do we explore undercover uh, and applying new technologies. And we've been focused on two main things, prediction and detection. So prediction is literally, can you put an X on the map where you think a gold deposit might be? And we've been doing major surveys to get the detailed magnetic coverage, getting some gravity coverage in the area, really basic nuts and bolts stuff that previous explorers didn't have. And we've also been working on our ability to, to detect. So, can we use new technologies to look through that sand cover and try and identify the mineral system that we're looking for? And one of the ones I'll talk to you about today is the CSIRO developed ultra-fine fraction soils, which is really giving us a potential window into a, a valuable and very powerful new exploration tool. 
So here we are. Uh, these are the projects that we've worked on this year. Uh, it's 10 of the 10 targets that we've been either doing geochemical and mostly drilling on, and some of them we've seen drilling for the very first time. I'm not going to go through all 10, but I'd like to show you three examples which give you a bit of an idea of what we're learning and how we're going about our exploration. And those three areas are the Sultan project up to the north where we've applied the fine fraction uh, soil work, the uh, Newkirk area, which is an area where we've looked at the use of pathfinders to try and vector into the core of the gold systems, and the Fremlands area, which is a fascinating insight into, if you don't know your regolith, you might be doing a lot of ineffective drilling. So I'll tell you that, tell you those, go through those three examples. So Sultan, this is a magnetic image. Uh, this is an area where there was a subtle gold anomaly. We sputtered a EIS, uh, so a government co-funded drill hole, which for want of a better word, was a bit of a shot from the hip. We were trying to learn about the, it was a stratigraphic drill hole, trying to learn about the geology, trying to see what we could see under this uh, gold anomaly. And we successfully intersected a pretty high grade gold structure, seven metres at three grams with a, a core of almost half an ounce in the middle there. And when it wasn't really that well targeted, this was a pretty, you know, big step forward. The key structure, that salt and fault, we can trace over 10 kilometres of strike. So the next question was, how do we explore this vast area without going broke drilling deep diamond holes? And this is an area where we trialled the, the, the CSIRO developed uh, fine fractions. Now we'd been doing multiple orientations and trials across the project and we found that this system was probably the most reliable and repeatable. So we targeted this area, a four kilometre strike area to the west. I can tell you there's not an effective geochem sample and there's no drilling in that box other than the drilling that we completed on our first section. So very much a virgin discovery. That fine fraction work was phenomenal. It generated a uh, one kilometre, that far western target, generated a one kilometre long coherent gold anomaly that sits smack bang on a major flexure in, a, in that Sultan fault. Almost textbook. And uh, whilst the central anomaly is still coherent, it's a lower magnitude anomaly, but this is the sort of ability, and, and if we can follow this up with successful drilling and prove there is bedrock gold under this golden target, we have really have confirmed a powerful new tool for the Tanami. To give you an idea, that anomaly we announced on the 26th of September last month. We completed heritage monitoring uh, in the days following. We got a rig mobilised from Perth and completed 67 holes over that target uh, less than 15 days after we announced the geochem anomaly. So those that do say Tanami is a pretty tough place to operate, sometimes if you get organised it's, uh, it's not a bad place to operate at all. So a great job by the drilling company to get up there and also our team to get that, that job done. So those assays were, are very keenly awaited. The other thing, looking at pathfinders in the Tanami, one pathfinder element that a lot of people focused on was arsenic. Previous explorers thought arsenic and gold were one for one. When you plot up the database, I don't want to go into the mathematics, but basically there's no correlation between the two. They're probably following the same structures, but there's not a close association between gold and, and arsenic. When you look at some other pathfinder elements like bismuth, there is a phenomenal association, almost to the point where you don't get bismuth without gold and you don't get gold without bismuth. So diagrammatically what this means is if we're looking for one of these things out there in the desert, it's not going to look like this. It's going to look far more like, like this area, which is, a, which is the sort of the X-ray of the area. What we find out there is gold is dominantly a depleted signature in the regolith. So you get a really weak, subtle gold anomaly, usually coherent but subtle. But the core of the animal, the skeleton, the bismuth, is far more stable in the regolith. So you end up with quite sensational good bismuth numbers in amongst this cloud of low-grade uh, gold. And one area where we tested this just very recently was our Newkirk target. A 1.5 kilometre long gold with strong bismuth anomalism. There's never been a drill hole down to the basement here. We've done the first drilling of this only three weeks ago. And what we've, and again, still waiting for assays, so anything's possible. But what we're starting to look at is maybe where the best bismuth is, is potentially where the best gold in the primary might be. So we're waiting again for those results with, a, with, with real interest. The last area I'd like to quickly talk about in the last few minutes is, uh, is our Fremlands project. Now, I mentioned before that gold doesn't sort of hang around in the profile here very well, but this is quite an interesting story. So previous explorers had outlined a six kilometre long gold system here. What I can tell you, this is color, those holes are colour coded by gold grades, so there's a few decent hits through that corridor. 
no drilling deeper than 120 metres through that corridor, so very shallow drilling. And what they outlined was a profile that had absolutely no gold in the top 20 metres. So this was a very obviously, when you looked at the data in 3D, there was a heavily depleted or leached zone sitting directly below surface. So you might say, well, that's, that happens everywhere, but it wasn't recognised by previous explorers. So when they came and looked at the gold anomaly that sits to the south of Fremlands, they came through this area. That's a three kilometre long, reasonably coherent gold anomaly, pretty handy, up to 100 ppb uh, gold in some of those, those uh, samples. They came through here and drilled seven metre deep drill holes across this entire three kilometres, didn't get any gold and walked away. When you look literally a kilometre to the north and realise there's no gold in the top 20 metres, it's very fast you realise that this is an ineffectively tested target. And when you think of, when we look back at our historical data, 70% of all the holes ever drilled across that entire two and a half thousand square kilometres are shallower than 10 metres. So we think if we can prove that this area has been ineffectively drilled, it may open up a lot of the other areas that were thought to be effectively tested uh, to modern exploration. So we drilled two lines across the northern end of that gold anomaly, and this is the results of what we did. So the black sort of bracket there just shows the outline of where the, the surface gold anomaly was, and those are the seven metre deep uh, rab holes that were drilled over that target. What we then did is drilled a series of 80 metre spaced air core holes over that area, right down to basement and outlined a coherent plus 100 ppb gold anomaly that's over 250 metres wide. Now this is very coarse drilling, 80 metres spaced on a very thin and stripped profile. So what we've gone down now is we got the rig back literally last week and infilled this area where we could down to 20 to 40 metres spaced. And the idea there is to try and hit the high grade core of that gold anomaly, which we can then follow to depth. But the really exciting thing here is we've proven that shallow drilling in this part of the world if you don't know where you are in the profile, can be fundamentally leave behind major gold systems for, for, for future testing. So a really exciting uh, result there. So in the last, since July, we've been pretty flat out. The guys have drilled over 17,500 metres of drilling, which is not bad for a, a team of four. Um, they're literally packing up now and coming home for a hard-earned rest. We've got results back from Fremlands, but we have multiple programs still waiting for assay results, which we think we'll see now between between literally now and to, the, uh, to January next year. So we're watching those with, with interest and not a bad time to be looking at Hamlin for um, potentially delivering some pretty interesting drill results. So I'll wrap it up there. If you'd like to know anything more about Hamlin, feel free to come out and speak to us at the, uh, at the booth. And certainly if you're looking for a, a gold exploration story where potentially the, uh, the, the success is a substantial increase in um, our market cap, uh, keep an idea of keeping Hamlin on your watch screen and uh, feel free to reach out and contact any time you'd like. Thanks very much.